we're, we're going to go ahead and just maneuver right into the word of God. Um, I believe that God wants to say something. Um, if not to anybody else, this message is for me. Amen. If not to anybody else, I, and you feel free to listen. You feel free to listen. You feel free to take notes. But I believe that when God released this message, he released it to me. And, and, and when I, I was in study and, and uh, when he began to give me the meat behind this, I said, God, you're preaching to me. And uh, I'm a firm believer that if you ever stand before people to deliver a word, that word ought to be going to you first. You ought to be the first partaker, the first recipient of the word. And uh, like I said, this one right here, I'm preaching to me today. Y'all can listen, um, but, but this is for me, and I know it's for me. Amen. Uh, and, and it's a continuation of where we were last week. Uh, so we're going back to Luke chapter 17. Going back to Luke chapter 17. And, and the Lord, as I was this week talking to another pastor friend of mine, uh, we sat down and we went to lunch together and we, we began to talk about uh, some of the things that's going on in our nation. And um, then we began to talk about this pandemic and, and, and how it's affecting the church and, 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 and what will the church look like after this. And, uh, you know, we began to just kind of just kind of talk and, 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 and kind of put into perspective where we are right now. And, and he began to ask, and, and I've had several other pastors ask, what, what, is, your, what is your church looking like uh, right now? Are you back in? I said, yeah, we're back in. And, uh, are they showing up? Are they coming? I said, man, you know, you know how it is. We, we probably had probably uh, 10, 20 percent of what we were, you know. And so I, I told them. We, got, we just got to keep on trusting and believing that God is going to touch the hearts and grip the hearts of the people uh, to, to, to make them want to come on back. Amen? And so we're going to look here at Luke 17. Uh, if you will, put that on the screen for me. Uh, I'm going to read this from the, tra the, the, the Passion Translation. The Passion Translation, I believe up here is in the Message Bible. Um, amen. And so I'm going to read this from the, past, the, the Passion Translation. And it says, Jesus traveled on toward Jerusalem and passed through the border region between Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered one of the villages, ten men approached him. But they kept their distance, for they were lepers. They shouted to him, mighty Lord, our wonderful master, won't you have mercy on us and heal us? When Jesus stopped to look at them, he spoke these words, go to be examined by the Jewish priest. Uh, they set off and they were healed while walking along the way. One of them, a foreigner, somebody shout a foreigner. Come on, shout that out, a foreigner. One of them, a foreigner from Samaria, when he discovered that he was completely healed, turned back to find Jesus, shouting out joyous praises and glorifying God. When he found Jesus, he fell down at his feet and thanked him over and over, saying to him, you are the Messiah. And the Bible reiterates this. It says that this man was a Samaritan. Come on, I want you to get that. This man was a Samaritan. Uh, so, so, so where are the other nine, Jesus asked? Weren't there ten who were healed? They all refused to return to give thanks and give glory to God except you, a foreigner from Samaria. There it is a third time. A foreigner from Samaria. Somebody shout a foreigner. Then Jesus said to, uh, to, to the healed man lying at his feet, he said, arise and go. It was your faith that brought you salvation and healing. So what the Lord dropped in my spirit for this week, he said, 
if they don't come back. And so I just want to talk with you just for a moment about if they don't come back. I ain't got no talkers right here. I, I, I want to share a word with somebody today. And like I said, I, I really believe that this word God dropped in my spirit for me. And so if, if, if something don't fit you, just understand that this is for me. Come on, somebody. But I believe that there are some people in this room that uh, you too have experienced moments where you did something for somebody, but they didn't come back. Come on. I, I, I believe that there's somebody else in this room where you have uh, uh, poured out to somebody else and they didn't come back. I believe there's somebody in this room that have uh, shared your gifting and shared your anointing with people and they took it for granted and didn't come back. But uh, the Lord, he, 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 he dropped this in my spirit. He said, if they don't come back, take a look at the scripture right here. And I want you to find how to respond when they don't come back. Mm. Come on. And so look at here, look at here, look at here. The first thing that I realized in this text, when I read it the second time, when I went back over it again, when God showed me this again, what I realized is one thing, there's always a remnant. Somebody shout, there's always a remnant. There's always going to be a remnant. What is a remnant? A remnant is a, a group of people who are left after catastrophe hit. A, a, a remnant is a group of people who, who stay and remain and will, will stand after all kind of things begin to fall apart in their life. And everybody begin to run and hide. Everybody else begin to leave. Everybody else begin to duck and dodge. But there's always a remnant. Come on, somebody. I ain't got no talkers in the room. So watch this. When, 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 when we look at where we are in this world today and we see how coronavirus have disturbed the United States and all across the globe. When we look at how coronavirus have disturbed the church and has shook up the church and has made the church look differently than it ever had before. Watch this. I believe that when we look at this, some people see the catastrophe, but some people look and see the mighty hand of God pushing us out into our preordained purpose of what the church is really supposed to be. The church is not supposed to be on the inside of the four walls. The church is supposed to be in the community. The church is supposed to be knocking on doors. The church is supposed to be going from house to house because if we look back in the book of Acts, we can see that in the beginning times of the church they weren't always meeting in the, in the synagogue. They weren't always meeting in the temple. But the Bible said they broke bread from house to house. They went from house to house with prayer. They went from house to house fasting and praying, believing for a move of God, believing that the Holy Ghost is getting ready to fall on somebody's life. And watch this. I just believe that if the church, and it's not going to be everybody, but I just hope that the remnant of the church, I ain't got no talkers in the room. I just hope that the remnant of the church will learn how to rise up, stand up, and show yourself mighty and strong, even in the midst of what the world call catastrophe. There's always a remnant. Look at somebody and just tell them, say, there's always a remnant. There's always a remnant. This is what Jesus experienced right here when he healed 10 men and, and, and they walked away from him following his orders. As they walked, they were healed. But watch this. Everybody didn't return. Everybody didn't come back. There was only a remnant. I ain't got no help in here today. There was only a remnant that came back. And the remnant came back and bowed down at his feet and worshipped him, saying, you got to be the Messiah. You got to be the king of the Jews. You got to be the king of kings. You got to be the son of God. What I want you to understand is that not everybody in this season will understand the assignment of the church. Not everybody in this season will, will, will understand uh, how coronavirus actually blessed the church and not cursed it. 
<laughs> Not everybody will look at this and understand that this was a blessing from God because now there are churches all across the globe who are now on the internet and, and now have uh, access or uh, have given access to people to be able to sow into their ministries and hear from their ministries that never would have been on the internet had not coronavirus came. And so, what I want you to understand is that not everybody will understand what's going on around them. And so watch this. I want to bring this home to somebody in the room because watch this. You have been pouring out to some folks and you wonder where they are. You have been pouring out to some folks and you wonder why they're not showing up like they used to. You're pouring out to some folks and you wonder, is, is what I'm doing in vain? Is what I'm doing not really working? Is what I'm doing not really uh, making an impact? But I want to encourage somebody that don't look at the, the masses, but look at the rim it come on don't look at the masses but find the remnant and when the remnant show you who they are you better learn how to invest in the remnant and then just let the let the others do what they want to do come on keep pouring into the remnants look at somebody and say there's always a remnant come on there's always a remnant uh, the bible says in isaiah 10 21 and 22 it says a remnant will return it says the remnant of Jacob to the mighty God. For though your people Israel be as the sand of the sea, only a remnant of them will return. So it's talking about the masses of the people of Israel and how, how mighty uh, they are and how great they are. They are as, 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 as big as, as, as the state. They are as numerous as the stars in the sky. You can't count them. They are as numerous as the sand on the sea. You can't count every grain. And so watch this. The people of Israel, they are numerous. But uh, Isaiah had to remind the people that only a remnant will return to God. Come on. God has blessed some folks. God has worked miracles in people's lives. God has uh, opened doors for some folks. God has allowed people that weren't qualified to get promoted on their job. God has uh, brought health back to your body, brought strength back to your body. God has blessed people time and time and time again. But yet when it's time to worship him, only the remnant shows up got no talkers in here when it's time to come back to the house of God and worship him the one that gave me the breath to breathe everybody out there talking about I can't breathe but it looked like y'all breathing in the room ain't got no help in here it looked like God has still blessed you with the air to breathe God has still given you life to live and some of us take it for granted and only the remnant come to worship mighty God look at somebody and tell them there's always a remnant this is number two. He said that it's not always the ones you think. I told you he preaching to me. He said it's not always the ones you think. It's not always the ones you think. I want y'all to get this. It's not always the ones you think. Because watch this, we can pour out so much and we can, we can, we can invest in people so much and, and, and they will, uh, in, in return, walk off and leave you. And you're sitting there wondering, man, why would they walk off and leave when I have invested so much and when I have poured out so much? And, and, and it seemed like they are ungrateful, it seemed like they are unappreciative. And then they won't even return back to the place. They won't even return back to the well from which they used to draw from. And it leaves you to wonder, what am I doing wrong? It leaves you to wonder... What What's going on? And God had to remind me and show me in this text that it's not going to always be the ones you think. Somebody saying, what are you talking about, preacher? Let, let me just go ahead and break it on down for you. Y'all remember when I stopped every time when I got to a foreigner and, and I had you to uh, re re repeat that after me and shout out a foreigner? Somebody just go ahead and shout that back out. Shout a foreigner. Come on. And so watch this, watch this, watch this. What we have to look at is this. Uh, in the Bible days, there was an alt between two nations. There was an alt between and a battle between, a war between Samaria and the Jewish people. Uh, they didn't get along. 
They didn't like each other. They didn't listen to each other. They didn't talk to each other. They had no dealings with one another. And, and so for a Samaritan to, to be uh, talking to Jesus at the well, uh, it wasn't something that was common. Come on, somebody. And the disciples, when they found out that Jesus was talking to a Samaritan woman, they had to go to him and say, do you not know who you're talking to? Do you not recognize that this is a person of Samaria? And we don't fool with them, but Jesus had to remind them. He said, I did not come for those who are here. I did not come for those who are who are already made whole. But he said, I'm the great physician and I come for those who need a healer. So look at here, look at here, look at here. I was sitting and, and, at home this morning and every morning at 8 o'clock, every morning at 8 o'clock, I get a a notification on my phone from dictionary.com and it's called the word of the day. When this word of the day came on my phone this morning, somebody shout this morning. When the word of the day came on my phone this morning, I had to just jump up out of my bed and say, my God, my God. I say, I say, God, you're so good. He know he know just what to do. He know he know just what to do because I was conflicted. I was conflicted about this sermon today, and I said, God, this is for me. This is not for the everybody. This is not for the body of, the, uh, of Christ. This is for me. You're preaching to me. But God said, No, I need you to know that I'm confirming what I'm getting ready to give you to say to the people. So when I looked at the word of the day this morning, the word of the day was Samaritan. I said, my God, how in the world did, 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 did this just line up like this? God said, I'm, I'm, I'm God Almighty. I can, I can get in the, in the, in the uh, systems of technology and I can cause things to work in your, in your, in your, uh, uh, in, in your favor so that you can know and give you a sign to know that I'm still on your side and what I give you, I, I want you to know it's from me. And so I looked at the word of the day, and the word of the day was Samaritan. I said, God, you you just confirming things for me. And so so I, I looked at that word of the day, and, and the word of the day, uh, the Samaritan, it means someone who's compassionate, someone who, who, who helps others in distress. And they get that from the good Samaritan who stopped and helped the man on the roadside that got robbed and beat up. Come on, somebody. Uh, when everybody else walked off and left him, the ones that knew him, the ones that he grew up with, the ones that were surrounding him, they saw him on the side of the road beat up and they kept on walking. Come on, somebody. But it was a Samaritan, one who don't even fool with the Jews. I ain't got no help in the room. It was a Samaritan, one who ain't got no dealings with the Jewish people, stopped on the side of the road to help this man. And so watch this. I want to help somebody in here today to let you know it's not always going to be the ones you think. Uh, some of y'all wondering why my family won't support me. Some of y'all wondering why my friends walking off leaving me. Let me just tell you, it's not always going to be the ones you think. It's not always going to be the ones to help you out that you thought would be the ones to help you out. But God said, I have a remnant and it may not be anybody that you know. But when I send them your way, it may even be somebody that you thought was against you. It may even be your enemy. But God said, when I stir their heart and I cause them to come your way. Don't you reject them. Don't you look down upon them. He said but you accept them and you let them work in your life. You accept them and you let them move in your life. You accept them and you pour out. Somebody shout pour out. Uh, it's not always going to be the ones you think. Watch this in this text. Ten men. Received a healing. But only a remnant came back to worship. And the remnant that came back to worship was not even one that recognized the one they were worshiping. 
The remnant that came back to worship was not even one that 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 gave uh, or, or, or did anything. Uh, or they they didn't they didn't study the 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 the, the Bible. They didn't study uh, the the text. They didn't study the scroll. They weren't. They didn't have anything to do with Jesus and 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 the God of Israel. And so for the remnant to return back to Jesus and worship Jesus, one whom he despised at one time. Listen, I want you to, I want you to know that some people may despise you in one moment and be with you in the next moment. Some people may not like you one day and be behind you the next day. And on the contrary, some people may be with you one day. And against you the next. And so what, what I want you to understand is that it's not always going to be the ones you think. Jesus did not think that if anybody came back to worship, it wasn't going to be this Samaritan. Come on. If anybody came back to worship, it wasn't going to be this man that doesn't like me. It wasn't going to be this man that doesn't like the Jews. If anybody come to worship, it ought to be the ones that I came to save. Mm. Look at your neighbor telling you it's not always the ones you think. But I like what Jesus did. When he came back and began to worship, Jesus looked down at this man and he said, were there not ten of you? He said, where are the other nine? He said, are you the only one? I can just imagine that Jesus was looking with a puzzled look on him on his face and he said are you the only one that came back you a foreigner a Samaritan come on one that don't like us it's you you the one that came back to glorify me you the one came back and recognized that I'm the Messiah I'm the Christ it was you that came back to worship me someone that your people don't even fool with. And Jesus began to talk to him and he told him, he said, you know what? I'm going to do more in your life than what the other nine received. He said, because you came back, I'm going to give you more than what the rest of them received. The rest of them, they just received a healing. But the Bible in the King James Version said that this man, because of his faith, he was made whole. (laughs) Come on, somebody. And and I like how the Passion Translation says it here at the end. It says he he told him, arise and go. It was your faith that brought you salvation and healing. Ain't got no talkers in the room. So not only did you get a healing, but now you are saved from the pits of hell. Not only did you receive a healing, but now you are saved by grace. Not only did you receive a healing, but now you have received substance behind it. Now you receive something that you can run and tell folks that they may not be able to look at and understand, but you can demonstrate it. Ain't got no talkers in here. They may not be able to look at your salvation, but you can demonstrate it. They can look at you see that you once was a leper but now you're healed but he said I'm gonna do something not only on the outside of you but I'm getting ready to do something on the inside of you why don't you just look at somebody and tell your neighbor he's working on the inside out because I don't want just a healing on the outside I don't want to just look good on the outside but God I want you to do a work on the inside because there's some folks on the inside of me that I can't stand there's some folks that on the inside I don't like there's some folks that on the inside, God, you got to deal with my heart on. Because watch this. God knows our heart. He knows our issue. And if God wants to heal on the outside, he said, I got to heal you first on the inside. Look at somebody and tell your neighbor he's getting ready to heal. He's getting ready to heal. But not only is he going to heal, he's getting ready to make his people whole again. Some of y'all been walking around like a half Christian. But God said, I'm getting ready to make you whole. He said, some of y'all been walking around just a part ways Christian but he said I'm getting ready to make you whole is there anybody in the room today that can shout out God I'm ready for you make me whole God I need you make me whole deliver me 
save me, sanctify me, cleanse me from all unrighteousness, restore the joy of my salvation. God, give me peace concerning the things around me. God, give me love in my heart concerning what's going on around me. God, give me everything I need to be able to make it in this season of my life. Somebody shout and give God praise. He made them whole. So this is the third thing that God showed me. He said, even when they don't return. He said, even if they don't come back. This is what he said. He said, work the gift anyway. I ain't got no talkers in the room. He said, work the gift anyway. God has given some of y'all in this room a gift. God has given some of y'all in this room multiple gifts. And it's time to work the gift. I dare you to look at somebody and tell your neighbor, say, it's time to work the gift. I said, look at somebody and tell them, it's time to work the gift. Because God has blessed some of y'all. God has given you more than you could ever imagine. Some of you, God has given some for Folks, uh, something that you haven't even unlocked yet. And I want you to know that God is waiting on you to give to, to operate in the gift anyway. I know that it's some folks that's gonna come that you don't like. I know it's some folks that's gonna come that don't like you, but I dare you in the room to just look at somebody and tell them work the gift anyway. I said work the gift anyway. Come on, shake somebody's hand. Uh so shake somebody's hand, you know. Come on. Shake somebody's hand that you, you, you was in the house with. I know we're still in coronavirus. Uh, so so let's keep social distancing. But look at somebody and tell them, say, neighbor. I said, neighbor. I said, neighbor. Shout neighbor. Tell them work the gift anyway. I said, work the gift anyway. Come on, tell them, say, keep on working the gift. Everybody's not worthy of benefiting from your gift, but work the gift anyway. Some folks will talk about you behind your back, but work the gift anyway. Some will receive from you and won't return to you, but work the gift anyway. Come on, some folks will eat from your table, tell you it's good. Get up from the table and go tell everybody else that was a nasty meal. But keep on working the gift anyway. I ain't got no help in the room. Come on, look at somebody and tell them work the gift. Come on, tell them, say work the gift. We got to learn how to be like Jesus. Because the Samaritan came back, Jesus didn't look at him and say, I don't know why you came back. You need to get on out of my face. But because the Samaritan came back and Jesus was still filled with compassion, he worked the gift anyway. Ain't got no help in the room. I said, tell somebody, keep working the gift. Come on, tell your neighbor, say, keep working the gift. Because everybody's not going to return. And watch this. What you got to understand is that for everyone who don't respect your anointing. You got to keep working the gift. You got to keep working the gift because everybody that, that, that overlooked your qualities, they didn't understand what you possessed. So when you got the opportunity, you got to keep working the gift. Some folks overlooked you. Some folks looked around you and some folks looked right through you. But when you came out on the other side, you got to keep working the gift. Some people may not understand your gift, but you got to keep on working the gift. Come on, somebody shout, keep working, keep working. Come on, somebody shout, keep working, keep working, keep working, keep working. Listen. I don't know about nobody else, but I have come to this conclusion that I'm not going to lay down my anointing for anybody. Come on. I said, I said, I'm not going to lay down my anointing for anybody. I'm not going to stop doing God's work 
for anybody. I'm not going to give up in this season for nobody. Come on, somebody. I, I just wish I had somebody in the room that could say, yeah, you're preaching to me right there. You're preaching to me right there. I felt like giving up. I felt like walking away. I felt like throwing in a towel. I felt like uh, being released and being free from this thing. But God said, now is not the season to give up. Now is not the season to stop. Now is not the season to quit. God said, now is the season to keep moving because I'm getting ready to enter you into your Proverbs 18, 16. Ain't got no talkers in the room. He said, I'm getting ready to enter you into your Proverbs 18, 16. Some of y'all looking like what they say, preacher. Well, let me just go ahead and say it for you. The Bible declares that in Proverbs 18, 16, he said that your gift will make room for you and set you before great men. I want you to understand something right here. I want you to understand, people of God, that God is God is still building your room. And some of y'all, you wondering why the folks hadn't returned yet. God said, I'm still building your room. He said, if they all came back now, you wouldn't have the capacity to hold everybody that you need to bless. Come on, somebody. He, so he said, I'm still building your room. I, I know some of y'all was worried and, and, and wondering, God, why am I not seeing the fruits of my labor? God said, your room is still in construction. Uh, come on, somebody. I want you, I want you to know in this room, I want you to understand in this place today that God is still building the room. Come on, don't get discouraged. Be not dismayed. But listen, I want you to understand that God is still constructing the room. And I want you to declare over your life that my gift is not inferior to anybody. My room just hadn't opened up yet. It, 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 it's not that my gift was a mistake. My room is just still under construction. And some folks saying, God, I've been preaching for 20 years. And it seemed like I'm not seeing the results that I want to see. God said, keep preaching. God says, keep teaching because I'm still building the room. But listen, I want to encourage you. Go ahead and play me something. I want to encourage you. I want to encourage you that if you give up too soon, if you give up too soon, the room that was almost prepared would have a foreclosed sign. Because you stopped paying the bill. My God. He said, listen. Not everybody right now. Is able. To glean. From the anointing on your life. Because if I gave it to you now, it'll overwhelm you. If I gave it to you now, you, be, you wouldn't be ready. You wouldn't be capable to handle what all comes with it. So what we got to understand is this. That God is a God of promises. And the Bible says that the promises of God are yes and amen. And so watch this. The Bible didn't say that if you work your gift well, that it'll make room for you. He didn't say that if you uh, 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 labored in the gift day and night, that it'll, work, it'll make room for you. All he said is that your gift, come on, he said your gift will make room for you. Everybody in this place today, you got a gift. Everybody under the sound of my voice, everybody listening, you got a gift. And what I want you to know 
is that God is still constructing your room. And when your room is ready, he will put you in there and set you before the people who can help make your dreams and aspirations come to reality. One of the versions says that he will set you before important people. He will set you before people of resources. He will set you before the people that can catapult you into your destiny. So look at somebody and tell them, keep working the gift. Come on, tell somebody to keep working the gift. Standing all over the room. <clears throat> if they don't come back, I had to go home and just kind of meditate on that. God, if they don't come back. Because some never came when we was outside. Some not even watching on YouTube and Facebook. Now that we are back open and inviting the church to come back, some still have yet to make their way back. And I'm not condemning anybody. Some people, they just may be afraid. That's, that's, that's okay. I understand. But I had to encourage myself. Because we don't know how long this virus will last. And so if it stays around and the people of God stay afraid, they may not ever come back. And so I had to encourage myself that if they don't come back. You just got to keep preaching. If they don't come back, keep worshiping. If they don't come back, keep pouring into the ones that do. If they don't come back, keep working the gift. So I want to encourage you in this room today as well. If this message touch you in any kind of way. Somebody may be working in ministry. Somebody may be uh, working in, in some other area where you needed to hear this today. I want you to understand that God said if they don't come back, keep working the gift because I'm preparing the room. He said keep working the gift because I'm preparing the room. You may not see this room filled, but he said that boardroom that I enter you into. Will be filled to capacity with the right people to make your dreams come true. Some of y'all been praying to start that new business. And I hear the Lord saying that you've been afraid to go before the bank to ask for that loan. Well, listen, I, I come to encourage you and let you know that God is still shaping the room. I said he's still shaping the room. And watch this. When the room get prepared and he tell you now is the time to enter, when you enter in there, I don't care what kind of credit score you take with you, they cannot deny you because you're favored by God. He said, I'm preparing the room. Keep working the gift. I'm preparing the room. I'm going to set you before those important people. Keep working the gift. Lift those hands, Father in heaven. God, we pray over every saint and believer under the sound of my voice today. God, I pray that you would encourage them in this season to not give up. Encourage them in this season, God, to keep moving and pressing forward. God, though difficult times may be here and, and, and we see it all around us, 
God, I believe that you are still working things out for our good. God, I believe that you are still uh, shaping and molding our lives, God, to, for something greater than we could ever imagine. So God, encourage your people's heart. God, encourage their minds today. Help them to know that you haven't left and you never will. God, help them to know, God, that you have never lost and you never will. God, help them to know that you are always triumphant and you always cause us to be triumphant. God, help your people to know, God, that, that you are with them and you will always be there to guide them, to lead them, to direct their path, God. If we would just continue to acknowledge you and trust you, the Bible said that you will direct our path. God, your word will be a lamp to our feet and a light unto our pathway. And God, we are asking, God, that you be that for us, God. Lead us in the right direction, God. Lead us down the correct path, God, to our destiny. God, don't let us take any detours that are unnecessary. God, don't let us get off track, God, in this season. But God, keep us on the right road, God. Keep us moving, God, expeditiously to our destiny, God. In the name of Jesus, keep us moving, God, at a fast pace, at a quick pace, God, to the place that you have called us to, God. Don't let us get distracted. Don't let us get off kilted. In the name of Jesus, keep moving us forward keep moving us forward keep moving us forward and I believe that our road will one day lead us to that room that you are now constructing God I hear you God, I hear you. God, I hear you. God said for about five of y'all in this place, he said, your room is near you. He said, it's not far from you. I hear the words saying like, I, I hear God saying it like the words said in, in the book of Acts, not many days from hence. Not many days from hence. God said, your room is near. Keep moving forward. Keep working the gift. In the name of Jesus. God, we thank you for the room. Come on, somebody give them praise right there. God, we thank you for the room. I can't see it right now, but God, I thank you for the room. God, I haven't even seen the doorway yet, but God, I thank you for the room. God, I don't know who you got on the other side, but God, I thank you for the room. God, I don't know what my destiny looked like from here, but I thank you for the room. Come on. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. My moment. Can I just explain something to y'all? Your life is full of moments. Your life is full of moments. I'm not talking about minutes, but I'm talking about moments. Your life is full of moments. And watch this. If you miss your moment, you can possibly miss your destiny. Come on, I said if you miss your moment, you could possibly miss your destiny. So watch this. Every time that God presents you with a moment, you better walk up in there with your head held high, knowing that God has given me this moment, and I know that I'm backed by his favor, so I won't bow to anybody. I'm going to walk in here with my head held high and my dignity high, and I'm going to know that God is getting ready to make ways for me that I never could have imagined. I never could have dreamt it. I never could have thought it. But God, because you are on my side.
because you are on my side. It's already mine. Somebody ought to just shout, this is my moment. Come on. Come on, this is my moment. Come on, just shout that this is my moment. Let heaven hear you. This is my moment. Come on. Let hell hear you. This is my moment. Come on. Because the devil and his angels, they're going to try to come against you. Well, but I hear the Lord say, without opposition, without opposition, without opposition, there is no position. My, my, my. Some of y'all didn't hear me. I said, without opposition, there is no position. If you got a position that you want to pose, you better question it. If you if you never experienced opposition in the position that you are in, you better look again. You better question it. Come on, come on, come on. Because if it's of God, the enemy is coming. Come on. If it's of God, he's going to test you. He's going to try you. And he's going to do all kind of things to destroy what God is trying to do. And so I want you to know that when opposition comes, you just throw your hands up. I said when opposition comes, you just throw your hands up and say, God, I thank you. God, I praise you. God, I give you glory. My, my, my. Because I know you're getting ready to do something great when I see the enemy. <laughs> I know you're getting ready to do something powerful and mighty when I see the enemy. So I don't get mad anymore. Y'all listen. I said I don't get mad anymore. I don't get mad anymore. I get happy when I see the enemy coming my way because I know one thing that is that God is uh, uh, working something out of my favor. But this is another thing that I know that if God be for me, I ain't got no help in the room. I said, if God be for me, I said, if God be for me, I said, if God be for me, he's more, he's more in the world against me and greater is he that is within me than he that is in the world somebody give him glory somebody give him praise come on give him glory I believe that right now God is freeing somebody from the thoughts that they used to have. Because you used to get scared when the enemy came. You used to get upset when the enemy came. But I hear the Lord saying that I'm renewing your mind. Romans 12, 1 and 2. He said, I'm renewing your mind. And the way that you used to see this, I'm changing your perspective. And no longer will you be afraid. No longer will you be upset. But from this day forward, I will know that this is a God thing. I will know that God has his hand on this. I will know that God is with me because of the enemy coming against me. Somebody give a praise. Hallelujah. 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 Now, Father, as we get ready to leave this place, but never your presence, God, go with us. Give us your love, your grace, your mercy, and your favor 
in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, in the name of Jesus. God, we thank you right now. 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 God, we thank you for what you're doing. God, we thank you for what you're doing. God, we thank you for the doors you're opening. God, we thank you for the rooms you're constructing. God, we thank you for the rooms that you're getting ready to enter us into. And God, we'll be careful to forever give your name praise, forever give your name glory, forever give your name honor. In the name of Jesus, the mighty one, the Messiah, the Christ, we thank you in Jesus' name. Every heart, shout amen. If you believe it, shout amen. If you believe it, shout amen. Come on, you dismiss, you dismiss. Hallelujah.